Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna look at how to do a day drink filter in Django for our stock management system, right? So this is what I mean by day drink filter, okay? Let's say we have an item and we've been doing some issue and receives, okay? So we wanna grab all the items we issued or received within a certain date range, okay? So if you look at the table, we have items that were last updated from the 14 and we have some on the 21st, then you have uh, the 30th okay so if you want to filter uh, for a certain range let's say I want to um, be able to see items from on the 14 all the way up to on the 15 I click search we should be able to have only those items okay so this is what we want to implement in this video all right so if you're not a subscriber and you enjoy videos like this you might consider subscribing so that you'll not miss our future videos we have all the codes on the blog site with step-by-step -step process as usual so I'm gonna take you through how to build this same filter. It's just gonna be a very simple process. So we have only two things that we need to do. We gotta create the forms and then apply it in the views.py. Okay, so we have all the codes right here. So the first step is to make the form, all right? So we're gonna make a form that will have this date range filter. So I'm gonna copy this code, paste it over on Sublime and then explain it. Right here, we need just two things, okay? We're gonna open forms.py and views.py, all right? So on forms.py, we're gonna create a form, okay? And that form will have the date range. Looking at it, currently we have this stock search form for the history data, okay? So we're gonna change this. I'm gonna create a new form and assign that to this view, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do right here. I'm gonna create the form in here that's the code I copied so I'm gonna paste it right here so this is the form that we're creating we're gonna create a form and that's gonna be called stock history site form okay and we're gonna have export to CSV as usual we're gonna have two extra fields the start date and the end date and both of them is gonna be a daytime field okay because we have a daytime field in our model so we're gonna create the same field right here so that we can filter both for dates and time okay so we're gonna have our model fields this category the item name start date and end date okay so this is what we need to do in the forms the py file okay so i'm gonna save it but right before i save it i already saved it so my server will have break but now okay it is already breaks so what i will need to do is to import this model right up here okay so we're gonna import it here, save it, run our server again. All right, so the next step is to go to views.py, look for the search history view. I'm gonna do find. Okay, it's right here. We have the list history. So I'm gonna change the form from stock search form to stock history search form. Save it and then refresh the application. Okay, stock history. Oh, I got that typo right there. I'm gonna undo and then put history right here. Search and refresh. All right, so we have our form, okay? We have the category item name, start date and end date as expected, okay? So now, but before the search works, like if I put the dates here, the search will not work because we need to make our filter. Like if I choose 2020, that's the month and the day. If I click search, not going to work, okay? So it is not filtering down to that date range. So what we need to do next is to implement the date range filter inside our query set so right in the query set here we have only search by item names okay we have filter by item names so we need to add the date range right here so that's what we have in the next step so if i scroll down i have this date range filter okay i will copy the entire query set and then paste it 
just below this credit set i'm gonna replace this one but just wanna show you the difference okay if i paste it right here i'm gonna indent that so with the previous credit set i have the item name filter okay so this time we're filtering by item names and also by last updated okay so in our models we have a field called last updated so we want to filter our items or our objects based on the field okay we're gonna have a range equals the form start date dot value comma form end date dot value okay but remember to put a comma right here right after the items name okay right after the item so i'm gonna remove this since we have the updated code right here save it and then do the test again i'm gonna click search and this time you can see it's working but what i noticed with this range is like if i choose on the 14 okay i expect 14 to be listed out here if i click search it will not give me that so i always choose one day ahead okay but it will not give me the date that i put right here okay it's just gonna be the 14 right here if i put 13 it's gonna be from 13 all the way up to 14 this will not be included okay it's like excluding this from 13 all the way up to 15 but exclude 15 13 inclusive 14 but excluding 15 all right so that's how this thing work okay if i click search you can see we're gonna have that and if i choose on the 21st and click search the 21st is not displayed but if i choose 22nd and click search you can see we have 22nd or 21st right here all right so this is how to implement the date range field as simple as that okay just copy and paste modify the code and you're done all right so you notice that we don't have a date picker on these fields okay so we're gonna implement that next. In the next video, we're gonna implement jQuery and jQuery UI in our application so that we can have a date selector instead of typing the dates right here, okay? But before I go, I'm gonna redesign this page like I have it in here. I wanna have the forms line on the left side and the table will be on the right side, okay? So if you've already know how to do that, you can just skip to the next video if it is already uploaded, All right? But I'm gonna do a quick one. I'm gonna switch over here and then open the template this history I'm gonna implement bootstrap rows and columns so right below here just before the form I'm gonna create a row make sure that's aligned okay so I will have that at the end of the row all right so I'm gonna have two columns one of them will be wrapping the form I'm gonna give it two columns and end that right here so if you're not familiar with this rows and column you can check the video i just uploaded it and i'm gonna link it on the upper right corner of the screen i'm gonna create another column and this time i'm gonna give it 10 and now and right below this table okay Okay, so just by doing that, if I click save and then refresh the application, you can see it is aligned as I want it, okay? And in the next video, we're gonna implement this as a date picker and we're also gonna implement some uh, pagination right here, okay? 
it might be the same video we might break it into two videos to make it short okay so this is what we want to achieve in this video if you enjoyed don't forget to click on the like button and see you in the next video